Hi everyone! In this video, we will discuss how to implement a long-awaited feature, namely replacing meshes with actors, which can be used, for example, for tree chopping. We will also learn how to save and load the last state. First of all, if you like my plugin, please leave a review. I really enjoy reading them and knowing that my plugin has helped you. You can also support me via the link in the description. Before we begin, I want to explain the difference between an instanced static mesh and a real actor. This will help you understand why I am against allowing the spawning of actors. If you already understand the difference in cost between them, you can skip this part. An actor contains a hierarchy of components, each with a bunch of different parameters and data. The actor itself also contains a significant amount of data and parameters for all occasions. In addition to data, there are a huge number of methods that are called for the actor and components during the initialization process. An instanced static mesh contains a list of instances of a specific mesh, and essentially, a new mesh instance is just another element in the list of transforms. The engine will, of course, create additional data for it to render and handle physics, but this is incomparably less data and no initialization methods will be called. So, instanced static mesh is a much more efficient solution for a large number of identical objects. Therefore, I did not support the inefficient method of spawning actors. If you are still not convinced and want to spawn actors, please write to me in the comments, or better yet, by email, and I will likely add it. Now, let's go over what's new in the update. In spawn preset, each element now has user data in addition to the mesh. User data can be any class inherited from biome instance user data. And here, any data that is needed can be stored. No methods need to be overridden. This is necessary so that later at runtime, you can request these data for a specific mesh and execute any logic dependent on them. In my example for trees, there is tree data which specifies the actor that will be created in place of the mesh. If we look at the actor, we will see that it is the same tree with text displaying its health, and health is a value that will decrease upon contact with the character. For stones, I have other data stored, a tag indicating the resource that should be added to the player when the object is collected. Here's how it all looks. If we approach a tree, it is seamlessly replaced by a tree actor displaying health. If the tree's health drops below zero, physics is enabled and it falls. When we pick up a stone, a message appears in the upper left corner with the resource we collected. For all of this to work, it is important to set the instance data packer type to biomes tag packer in each of your mesh spawners. This has already been done for the spawners in the plugin. This packer will record the necessary data for each instance when generating meshes so that later you can retrieve the corresponding user data for the mesh. Next, let's understand how all this works, and for that we need to look into the character blueprint. In the event graph, there's an on component hit event from which we get the hit result. Let's see what comes in there. So when we collide with a tree, we get a hit result containing the instanced static mesh component, and the hit item will have the index of the element we collided with. Using this information, we can perform any logic we are interested in. In this case, we cast the component to instanced static mesh component and move to a function that does all the work. There is a global function called extract user data which takes the component and instance ID from the hit result as input. It will return the user data instance specified for that element. This method is defined in the biomes category, along with other methods that can be used. Next, we cast user data to tree data and proceed to handle the collision with the tree. There are two ways to do this. The first relies purely on engine functions, and we'll discuss it first. The idea is very simple. 
we need to get the transform of the specific element from the component. Spawn an actor at this transform with the class taken from tree data, and then delete the instance from the component. That's it. This is how replacement with an actor is implemented. You can run it and make sure they work just like my methods. So why my methods? I'll show you now. This PCG has is partitioned enabled. So when we move away from the section with the chopped tree, it will be unloaded. The section is unloaded. Now let's return and see what happened. So you can see the chopped tree lying down and the same tree growing nearby. Not very obvious, but in reality, it's the same tree as before. Thus, it turns out that it has restored itself. So, if a player chops down a tree and moves far enough away, the tree will return by itself when using engine functions. If this behavior is acceptable for your game, you can use this method. However, if this behavior is not suitable, my methods will help avoid this. Now let's see how my methods work. We chop the tree, move away, the tree is unloaded, return, here was the tree, and now it's not here anymore. Let's now examine how this method is implemented. There is a method in the biomes section called remove instance. It takes the same ism and element index as input. It removes this element from the component and indicates whether it was successful. If successful, it will also return the transform of this element and a certain handle, which we will discuss later. So, we remove this element, spawn an actor at its transform using the class from tree data, and in this case, we fill the array of handles we have. Stones are processed somewhat differently. I wanted to demonstrate another approach to working with objects that do not require maintaining a complex state for the object. For instance, the actor for stones is not specified in user data. Here, we define all the necessary data for the game logic to process the object without creating an additional actor at all. This is the most efficient method. We simply retrieve the data from the instance and immediately perform the required action. In this case, we're just printing a string but you could add resources to the player's inventory, play a sound, or spawn VFX. Afterwards, the instance is simply removed from the component and the world. The transform isn't needed here. We just save the handle. Next, let's understand what these handles are. A handle is essentially a unique identifier for a single instance of a mesh in the world. This structure has no parameters or properties exposed in the blueprint because they are not needed here and these functions are all you can do with them. It's designed to remain valid even between game sessions. So, as long as the world doesn't change, handles can be saved and loaded from a save file. We will cover this later. Now let's examine what can be done with handles. Their primary use is to restore a previously deleted object. Let's look at an example. Here we have an event on Zed where we take the handle of the last deleted object and perform one of the actions on it. Specifically, it can be restored. You can retrieve the transform, which is the transform of the object that was deleted. You can also get the user data of the object to which the handle belongs. Let's see how this works. Suppose we deleted one object, deleted the second one, deleted the third one, when we press Z, the deletion is undone. If we switch to getting the transform, we will receive information about the object's position. Here is the position of the tree and the rock. If we switch to user data, we will receive the user data of the deleted objects. That's basically all you can do with handles. Now let's discuss saving the world. The main function when using my deletion methods is that the last state of the world can be saved and then loaded. There are two methods, get persistent data and set persistent data. Get persistent data returns a structure that should be saved. 
it can be saved anywhere. You can save it locally or in a save file. Then it can be loaded from the disk during the next session. An important detail is that handles are valid within the context of one last state. Therefore, if this state is saved, you need to save the handles. If it is loaded via the set persistent data method, you need to restore the handles that existed at the time of obtaining this persistent data. That's basically it. This structure also has no parameters, and there's not much else to do with it here. Now let's see how it works. We delete one object, the second, the third. Press 5. The game is saved. Restart. Press 7. And the state is restored. We can undo deletions because we restored the list of handles. For all these methods to work correctly with partitioned PCG, some changes are needed in the partitions themselves. This should happen automatically, but if it doesn't, there will be a warning during the map check. To fix this, you can either find the Biome Spawn Manager and press the Prepare for Runtime Interactions button or click Fix Actors in the Warning Properties and Save All Changes. After this, everything should work fine. Thanks for watching. If you need anything else or if something isn't working, please let me know.